Before you can begin laying out your part, you must ensure that one end is smooth and square. As can be seen, the rough cut on this piece of stock did not leave a smooth square surface. There's this lip here, and as you can see, the end is slightly slanted. In order to have accurate dimensions, you must first have a square basis for your measurements. In order to form this square end, we will take an end mill and face the end of this part to ensure that it is smooth and square. In order to perform this operation, you will need the following. A set of parallels, your part, an end mill, and a collet sized appropriately for the end mill you selected. The end mill and the parallels can be found in the red cart in the office, and the collets are located in the blue room on the racks beside the machines. Take your collet and your end mill and slip them together. If they do not fit snugly, you have selected the wrong combination. Once you have found the right combination, you can then slip the collet into the spindle of the mill and then reach onto the top of the machine and tighten the threaded shaft. This pulls the collet into the spindle. To tighten the collet, select one of the specially modified wrenches from the rack in the blue room. Pull down on the spindle brake and tighten the threaded shaft. Be careful, do not over tighten. Simply ensure that the collet will not become loose under use. To set your piece in the vise, first place a parallel along each side of the vise jaws. Then you place your piece on top of the parallels with enough protruding so that the mill does not risk damaging the vise. Then tighten the vise. You can then lower the quill of the mill to place the end mill at the correct height. To lower the quill, first release the quill lock and pull the lever. When you have found the correct position, be sure to lock it once again. For this initial facing operation, the edge finder is not used, as the end is not yet square. To begin the shaving process, first place the end mill just as it starts touching the piece, and then back off slightly. As you begin the milling process, you will slowly bring the end mill closer to the face until it shaves a layer off the entire piece. Before you begin cutting your piece, you must ensure that you have the correct RPM set on the milling machine. To do this, place a straight edge on the cut cutting speed chart along the parameters that you have selected. So we will be cutting mild steel, and the end mill I chose is 0.625 inches in diameter. So that placing the straight edge along those parameters yields an RPM of 600. To turn on the machine and set the desired rotating speed, first rotate and pull out on the emergency stop button, set the rotational direction to forward, and then turn the frequency knob until the desired RPM is indicated. For this example, the desired RPM is 600.
once you have faced your part, you will want to use an edge finder to zero out the analog dials and the digital readout for measurements in the XY plane. This edge finder can be found in the red cart and slips into a collet of the appropriate size. And then insert it into the spindle just like an end mill. Begin with the edge finder offset from the surface with a lower portion in the eccentric position. Start the machine with an RPM of 1000. Bring the workpiece toward the edge finder and you will see the lower portion become more and more concentric with the upper portion. As you will see, it is now nearly perfectly concentric. Continue moving the workpiece until you see the lower portion pop to the side, like so. That is why your vantage point for performing this process is very important. When the lower portion of the edge finder pops to the side, you have found the edge. Once you have found the edge, you must zero out the digital readout. To do this, press the set zero button until the top corner reads zero. Then press the button alongside the corresponding axis. This will set that axis measurement to zero. Then press the set zero button again to lock that zero so that pressing these buttons again will not disturb the measurement. If you do get to a menu you do not need, press C to clear and return back to the base screen. Note that you have only found the edge of the edge finder. To find the center of the spindle, you must move the axis half the width of the edge finder. Since the edge finder is half an inch, you must move the x-axis to 0.25 to truly find the center of the spindle. Now that you have found the center of the spindle, you can set the x-axis to zero again. Now for whatever tool you'll be using, you must add its radius to set the x reading to the edge of that tool. If you're using a drill bit, you will want to leave it on center. To zero out the analog dials, first loosen the retaining nut and then rotate the dial to zero. Then tighten the retaining nut. In addition to the facing operation, you will use the tip of the end mill to cut the open slot in the side of the piece. This video will now demonstrate that operation. After working on your piece, you may find that the collet does not come out of the spindle despite having fully loosened the threaded shaft. The proper method of removal is to take out the threaded shaft and insert this long smooth rod down the spindle and gem gently tap out the collet. Do not use the threaded shaft to tap out the collet for that risks damaging the threads on the collet and on the shaft. For these new machines, use this rod which does not have a handle at the top. The old machines will accept this rod with the T-handle at the top. If you need any help or have any questions, the shop supervisor on duty wearing this shirt will be happy to help.